Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, collectors of all ages, welcome to the Zone Collectibles and More. We are nestled in the historic downtown of Tifton, Georgia on Main Street. My name is Kevin. I am the resident RM here at the Zone. And today we are going to continue our discussion about unlicensed bootleg knockoff counterfeit fakes. We've gone through a lot of different collections and another one next to the fake pop situation are fake Pokemon cards. I'm going to go today over a few ways that you can tell if the cards are real or fake and some telltale signs. Now, first of all, I'm not going to condone or condemn anyone who, for whatever reason, has decided to purchase fake Pokemon. They do look okay. But the main reason you should not buy fake Pokemon cards is that they have no trade value or resale value. Now, if these bootlegs are purchased for kids to play with, make sure that they understand that their cards are not real and do not trade them with others that do have real cards because that's going to create an issue that you really just don't want to have to deal with. Um, this binder that we have right here, we've been collecting for a while and all of these cards are 100% fake. And it just goes on and on and on. Okay. Now, how can you tell let me set this off to the side here. How can you tell if a card that you're looking at or that you have in your collection is fake? First of all, this right here is one of the fake cards from the binder. Okay? Now this right here is an authentic Pokemon card. When you take them and set them side by side, you can see ever so slightly that the fake card that's in front is just a little bit smaller than the actual card. Number two, looking at them side by side, you can tell that the colors are just off. The fake card again is the one right here on the right. The real card is the one on the left. You can tell that the uh, yellows aren't right. The picture of the Pokeball is lacking detail. And the blues around the border of the back of the card just are not... It's just not right when you look at it. Now when you compare them by touch, the Pokemon card is a lot sturdier. When you go to the fake card, it is a lot more flexible and springy. Not to mention, this has a almost glossy, laminated kind of feel to both sides. Where you can definitely tell that you have a finish, but it's not that glossy overdone here. Now, when we talk about some other differences of these cards, okay? I have right here a deluxe card. This is a real this this is a real card. And if you can tell in there, this one actually has texture to the card. It's not just a straight flat gloss picture. You can, can you see the texture there? They almost look like fingerprint type ridges. That's the textures on a real card. The counterfeit cards do not. They are very slick. And they just have no texture. They have some holographic foiling, but it really doesn't go in any direction. It's just kind of there. Now, also, when you take a look at another real card... It has holographics, you can see it, but where the picture's at is where it stops. So the holographic runs this way, 
you have your picture and then the holographics continue to run that way. And a lot of these fake cards, the holographic is just there. Boom, in your face, obvious. Now there's a few other technical things that I'm going to show you about these cards. I don't suggest you do this at home. I only do it for the demonstration. But if you have a real Pokemon card, okay, and if you were to tear it, you will immediately see the difference. If you take a look, there is a dark core that runs through the middle of the card. The dark core runs through the middle of the card. You see that line of gray between the two sides of white? That's an authentic card. Now, when you take this card and you go to tear it, it is a whole nother issue. When you tear this card, as we've done right here, this card we tore, it's all white all the way through. And this is basically like a coating on top of a stickered back. This will come up and start to peel. And it's just a real flimsy little piece of foil and a fake card. So that's not good. Um, the other aspect that we have is that the fonts. This is a real card. And when you compare to the fonts down here on the bottom... See if we can get a good picture. See how there's that blurred white over black down there? And the text just doesn't necessarily look right. Sometimes the card names aren't even right. Sometimes their HPs are way wrong. But these are very tempting to purchase on eBay. You can pick up like a hundred for a couple of bucks. They're flashy. The kids love them. And... The problem is, if your child does not know, or the person you're giving them to does not know, they could try to trade this off for a real card, and that could present a lot of problems. Um, with collectibles like these, it's always better to go away from the counterfeits and get something that's an investable quality. This is a real card. Something that will have its value, hold its value, and possibly go up. Because no matter what, these unlicensed bootleg knockoff counterfeit fakes have no secondary value. No secondary market value. They'll never go up in price. And it's just really not good. If you enjoy Pokemon and you want to see them to continue to making the cards that you love in different series is it's like we said in the other vid it's like we said in the other video spend your money with the officially licensed officially co copyright trademarked cards so that your money is eventually going back to the hobby you love and they can keep producing officially the cards that you love so while we look at this, which is a real card, and I'm going to set the fake next to it so that you can kind of see the fact that there is no texture. It's, um, it's just, there's, there's just an issue all the way around. Let's recap what we learned today. Fake cards are just a little bit smaller. The colors are off in general. The backs... As far as the outer border, blue is usually wrong. They look way too glossy and almost laminated. They are also more flexible and bendy than a standard Pokemon card. A standard Pokemon card is a little bit more rigid. Most of the fakes that I've encountered do not have that texture like the one on the right versus the fake on the left. The foil is kind of a sticker and can kind of peel off, as we see with this one right here. It just, that fake card has a sticky back and this piece of foil, and it's just, it's, it's not good. Also, when you take a look at the printing down here, like we were saying earlier, the printing is off. 
in that bottom right hand corner where if you go to an authentic card the printing is spot on the fonts are correct fake cards are easy to tear they are now not with these that have the coating because naturally the plastic doesn't tear but you'll you'll tear this part of the card first if it was a basic card it would tear extremely easy and if you tear a pokemon it will have that dark core right there in the middle. So that's basically all I got today. Just a way for you to be able to kind of look through your collection, kind of see if you're spending serious money on cards that they all are all authentic. You have to be careful with flea markets and festivals because now they're putting fake cards and fake packs in fake sealed boxes. So if it sounds too good to be true and you could buy a box of Pokemon for 20 bucks, they're probably not authentic. If you do open those cards and they're too glossy, they're too flimsy, and you get a hit card in every pack, you also probably have a series of um, counterfeit bootleg cards. This is just a public service announcement. We've seen a lot of these fakes come through the store, and we've been telling the, the uh, people who have them in their collections, mark them, you don't want to try to sell them, they're not authentic. We do not have any of these cards other than what we have for show purpose to educate folks here. We do sell officially licensed collectibles, general merchandise, and custom artisan handcrafted uh, creations that fall under the Fair Use Act, as well as things that fall under the Millennium Copyright Act. Um, we believe in a strong secondary market, and we believe that when you spend your money on authentic product, you are helping an official product. You are helping those, those licensed properties that you know and love and to keep them rolling. Just a little PSA from us to you. Have a zone-tastic day. Thank you.